Ed Milet is an expert in these deflections and lies of omission. We're gonna go and look at some of the videos that I actually did include in my WFG part three video of him giving trainings back in his WFG days when he was still in the company. This is called objections, finishing sentences with a question and other skills. Okay, let's talk for a second about overcoming objections. And we talked earlier about how important it is to finish a sentence with a question. Already you're like, this guy is a fucking crook. Overcoming objections. That's like car salesman shit. Oh yeah, but I gotta talk to my wife. All right, boys, what you're gonna say then is, well, call your wife right now. <laughs> You know what an objection is to someone in an MLM? Any question. Any question that's not literally in the book, the script that they gave you, little pamphlet. Anything other than that is an objection to these people. Already you're on the back foot. Well, you're objecting to me. You know, you're the one trying to defend yourself. No, no, I'm not criticizing. I'm not ob objecting. I'm just asking a question. Well, now you're the one being negative. You're the one who doesn't believe. It's so important to answer a question with a question. Hey, how much money will I make in this? How much do you think you'll make in this? How much does this pay? Well, it really depends. How much do you think? You're a fucking piece of shit. That's not something that's natural for many of us, but it's a very easy skill to learn and it'll create the dynamic when you interact with somebody that you're the asking of the question person and they're the answering. You're the big G, they're the little fucking pleb. You ask the questions, they answer. You're big, they're small, you're rich, they're poor, you win, they lose. I'm Ed Milet, WFG changed my life. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So let me give you an example of what would be called, say, a tie down. We're just gonna go through a couple skills here. A tie down, that sounds like fun. Guys, wouldn't you like to be tied down in a conversation with this guy? So a question at the end of a sentence demands them to say a yes. That's what a tie down is. So let me give you an example of that. If I were to say, Mark Ursula, getting out of debt and sa saving more money just- How, how absolutely on brand is it that it's two black people as well? that they're doing this with. Because famously, these MLM schemes are some slimy, oiled up, white confidence man doing this to a black family, a brown family, a Mexican family. The realism in this video, 10 out of 10. Mark Ursula, getting out of debt and sa saving more money just makes sense, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. So now you guys can see, you've got your hand up their ass and they're just your little puppet. Mark Ursula, it makes sense to save more money, doesn't it? Yes, Ed. Good job. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this guy is a millionaire and you are not. Between saying, Mark and Ursula, it just makes sense to get out of debt and I leave it there. That's a statement. But if I say, doesn't it, or isn't it, or couldn't it at the end of a sentence, or wouldn't it, that now turns that statement into a question. And now we've created that little dynamic as we're going of getting you to say yes to me. I would love to see a dating video from this guy. All right, so guys, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna tell her, I never said that, you're crazy. Are you on your period? Relax. Then you're gonna wanna tell her, I don't meet parents. It's one of my boundaries. And then she's gonna say to you, well, what is the actual value that you have that doesn't line up with you meeting parents. You're then gonna say, get off my back. She's then gonna say, sorry, I was just asking. You're then gonna say, this is why your dad left. And after that, she's gonna know that you are the one who asks the questions and she is the one who answers them. And she's gonna know not to fuck with you. I'm Ed Milet, welcome to WFG. <laughs> He's a millionaire. You're not. And so I want you to learn finishing those sentences. I love to say things like, doesn't that make sense? That makes sense, doesn't it? Couldn't it? Wouldn't it? Shouldn't it? And You saw Nathan in my ACN video doing this exceptionally well. Really simple. Blah, 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 blah. Does that make sense with you guys? Does that make sense with you guys? Well, he just fucking said it's going to be really simple. So if you say, no, it doesn't make sense, who's the idiot? You! The other thing I want you to learn is just alternative of choice. Just learning to give someone the choice between two things that are both acceptable to you. I want you to listen to this again, and I'm gonna show you how actually maniacally villainous this is. Just learning to give someone the choice between two things that are both acceptable to you. He calls it an alternative of choice. You know what that actually is? The illusion of choice. I remember when I did a babysitting course when I was like 13 years old, I was doing a babysitting course. And there was this thing that was like, uh, they taught us about how when dealing with children, sometimes they're disagreeable because they're children. So rather than saying, do you want milk or apple juice when you know they're supposed to have milk, instead say something like, do you want your milk in a red cup or a green cup? That way you've removed the element of choice away from them having milk. You've just given them new choice 
in terms of which cup they want. That's exactly what Ed is talking about here. The same tactic that I was taught when I was 13 years old in a babysitting course for how to get a three-year-old or a four-year-old to listen to you is the exact same thing that Ed Milet is here talking about with this couple here in this demonstration about potentially major financial decisions that they'll make in their life. Investments, insur life insurance. You know, this is not a small thing that they're buying. This is a very complex contract with lots of fine print and many pages that they should be able to understand. And at the very most surface level, you have Ed Milet skewering and messing with the truth. You're not giving them choices. You're, you're taking away choice and making it sound good. You'll notice in many of our presentations at the end of the sentence, they'll say, listen, I have a Monday or a Wednesday open. Which one of those would work better for you guys? And then they'll pick either one of them as appropriate or would six o'clock or eight o'clock be better? I actually have a habit in my real life now when I finish Satan's sentences often of saying that makes sense, doesn't it? I've been taking advice, education, training advice from literal psychopaths in multi-level marketing for so long that in my actual regular everyday life, I have become a psychopath too. I'm Ed Milet, welcome to WFG. Now, when you get an objection from somebody, the natural human reaction is to answer it. Well, I, I've heard of WFG before, or I saw this on the internet, or we don't have enough money, or I already like my program. It's easy to say something, a statement, well, my gosh, that's not true about us. Let me tell you the truth. And what you've done now is you've begun to become confrontational. It's begun to become a debate, one in which you will not win. And so when you get an objection, I just want you to think this through. If you can just confirm the objection, there's the old analogy of feel, felt, and found. When they give you an objection, you'll see this earlier, I could say, I know exactly how you feel about that. I felt the same way myself when that happened with me, but let me tell you what I found. I've heard this so many times as well. I've seen this with my own eyes. Is this a pyramid scheme? I used to think this was a pyramid scheme too. That's what I read when I Googled it. I thought the same thing as you. I'm just like you. But then I, I found out that every company is a pyramid scheme. If you really think about it, Walmart is a pyramid scheme too because they've got the manager and then they've got two assistant managers and then they've got all these cashiers and then the janitor. That's when I learned that everything is sort of, everything's multi-level. So no, we're not a pyramid scheme. Isn't that such an interesting answer? You have one person who's very high up in a company saying something like, we're not a pyramid scheme. Pyramid schemes are illegal as though something being illegal means it couldn't possibly be happening. I'm not a drug dealer. Drug dealing is illegal. Think. Then you have other people equally as high up in the company saying everything's multi-level marketing. Everything's a pyramid. Shouldn't y'all be on the same page? Is it a pyramid? Because everything else is also a pyramid. Therefore, you're absolved of guilt because you're just like everything else. Or are you not a pyramid because pyramids are illegal? Which is it? The more clever of these folks would probably say, well, both. We're not a pyramid and everything is multi-level. <laughs> The clock strikes 13. That's one of the first things in uh, 1984. The narrator says the main character was walking. The clock had just struck 13. The truth has become so twisted and warped that the clock can now strike 13. And no one knows what day it is even. There's a book called Double Speak. The author is William Lutz. He talks about deep chilled chickens and therapeutic misadventures. What is a therapeutic misadventure? It's when the surgeon accidentally kills someone on the operating table. This is double speak. Oh, our chickens aren't frozen. They're deep chilled. It wasn't a relationship. It was an entanglement. You know, and to add my lead, this is just a Tuesday. What we're going to do now in a minute is you're going to watch them object the typical objections that you may hear in the field, and you'll see me use some of these strategies in overcoming those objections. We, we've talked to somebody from your company before, and uh, yeah, he's kind of pushy. Yeah, I, I know how you feel. In fact, the first person that approached us with WFG was a little bit that way as well. So believe me, you know what I found out though, as I really looked into the company a little bit more deeply, I found that these were really good people and they make a, they make a major difference for the families that they see. I think what you're going to find out about our firm is that there's an awful lot of different kinds of people within our firm. But I think you'd agree with me that every company has good and bad involved with their company. Wouldn't you agree? The tactics he's using in this video are the exact same tactics WFG folks are using still to this very fucking day, making millions and millions of dollars doing this. And it's amazing to me and horrifying to me that this still works, this same strategy, both siding the issue. I, I totally know how you feel. I felt the same way, but then I learned, wouldn't you agree that all companies have good and bad people? This is just the bad apples argument. It's a way of never taking accountability for anything. If somebody spits in the food at McDonald's, it's not fair to say it's about all McDonald's, for sure. But if 99.9% .9 of McDonald's restaurants were doing that, 
I think I could say that. Oh, well, 99% of people, they have, they just keep going. They have a, the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. You can't get through to them. Like Ed said earlier in this uh, presentation, this training, you'll never win an argument with the customer. Likewise, you will never win an argument with them. How many debates have I had to do on my channel to hammer home the point that they do not get it? They will just keep slipping through your fingers and swerving to the next thing to try to confuse you and stay off the question because they can't handle the fucking heat and they can't answer a truthful question. My debate with Febby Francois, who's in World Financial Group, I asked this guy if there were multiple ice cream trucks in the same neighborhood, can't you see how that would hurt the potential business for any one of those trucks? Because now there's more market competition. And you know what he said? It's ice cream, it will melt. These people are so deeply locked away in the matrix, in the sunken place. Is this multi-level marketing? How do, you, how do you feel about multi-level or network marketing? Doesn't answer the question. Answers it with a question. How do you feel about multi-level marketing? I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I hear you. Is it your concern that we're talking about doing something where we're going to recruit a bunch of friends and family and get them into a business and they're going to buy all these products they don't need and then your reputation is going to be trashed forever? Because yeah. that's exactly what we're going to do. Yes. I know exactly how you feel. Believe me when I tell you that is not something my wife and I would want to get involved with either. And it was one of my initial questions. This whole recruiting conversation and coming to business with me sounds a little bit like that, doesn't it? Yes. I want you to know very clearly that's not the case. We're in an industry that requires licensings and exams and uh, a very extensive training. You've heard it all before. In my very first WFG video, Hartage's brother, the guy who said he's my, he's my younger brother. Remember when he was on the phone with the police calling the police on me? He's like, we are highly regulated business and we can't have it. First of all, your little office here in Edmonton on the, you know, in Mill Woods, this specific office is not highly regulated. Insurance as an industry is regulated in the sense that you have to get an insurance license through the government. You have to get your education materials and licensing from the government. Just because that license is given to you from the government does not absolve you or preclude you from the potential for wrongdoing. It's like saying, I have a driver's license, so there's no way I was speeding. Your driver's license is also a government license that is highly regulated. It's just decorative language. It's just flim flam, nonsense. Program, and there's a screening process to even get associated with us in the first place. So absolutely by no means. There's a screening process even to get associated with us in the first place. The screening process is, do you have a beating heart and the money to pay to sign up? You're in. That's a very important question. I want you to notice when they initially asked me, is this a network or multi-level marketing kind of a company? One of the important things I didn't do was immediately say no. And because I don't know how they feel about that. So I'm going to lie, a lie of omission until they reveal their hand. Watch as I have to be strategic about every single word coming out of my mouth. We are legit, I promise. I could never said anything. I know exactly what you're saying. How would you feel though if you were about to educate somebody and help them in a way that would benefit their family? If you ask them what they do, they help families. Well, how do they help families? By selling life insurance. To them, selling life insurance sounds a lot worse than helping a family. I don't know if this made it into the WFG part three video, but during one of the Zoom meetings that I attended with Raja Dhaliwal that he was hosting and doing the presentation, presentation. He said, you don't ever want to say to somebody that you're, you know, working or selling something because nobody wants to buy anything and they don't want you to feel like you're selling them. So instead, and this is the slimiest shit ever, he says, tell your friend you need to give them a gift because you have to be in person to receive a gift. Of course, when you meet up with them, what is the gift that they receive? Knowledge. In my upbringing, I always thought I was going to be a Major League Baseball player. Everything I did surrounded baseball, and it looked like I was on that path early in my life. And like most people, my original dream didn't work out. It's hard to put into words what WFG's done for me and my family. Checking all the boxes already. I thought I was going to do this, but then life came at me really hard. Thank God for WFG. Thank God for insert blank company. For my peace of mind to not worrying about a paycheck or a bill or how we're going to do the things for our children we want to do or educate them, to uh, our travel, to our experience experiences, even our faith, even the different things we get to invest ourselves in now because we're not on a time clock. We don't have to worry about money at this stage in our lives. You've heard it all before. Hartage said it to me in our first meeting. I can wake up without an alarm clock. And I don't need to wake up with an alarm clock. Interesting thing about Ed Milet, he still speaks at World Financial Group conventions and conferences. You know, in Vegas, they have these things and wherever. Ed Milet will never say World Financial Group. He has done the complete Grant Cardone rebrand 
where he is just a motivational speaker, Grant Cardone, Tony Robbins, Lane. How Ed Milet made his millions. Watch this. Financial services business in that, that sounded like that was your main thing that got you going. Can you talk us a bit about how you built that? I did. I, I built that. It's a recruiting model. And so the key to that business was getting great people working with me. Are you already noticing the subversion and the misdirection that's going on here? Think about any number of things that could be financial services. A bank is financial services. Are you an insurance broker? Is it stocks? Are you the guy that makes the plastic for debit cards? What are you? That could mean so many things. Oh yeah, I was in financial services and it was a recruiting model. They'll never fucking say I was in an MLM company called World Financial Group that fucked over X amount of people. Of course they'll never say that. By the way, Ed Milet was the same guy who claimed to be Jesse Lee Ward's mentor. A month before that woman died, Ed Milet released a podcast episode with her. And in the beginning of that interview, while this woman is literally weeks away from death from cancer, he brags about how she pays him thousands of dollars a month for training. This is the video. Two months ago, doctors say she only has months to live. Stage four cancer nightmare. This is supposedly your friend. Watch this. And I have somebody sitting across from me that I have grown to love very much. She's a woman that uh, I started coaching. She pays me the big bucks to coach her. I have someone sitting across from me who I have grown to love very much. And what's the very first thing he says to qualify that love? She pays me the big bucks. If you were to say that this person is a psychopath, I would agree with you. You can't make this up. The raw reality, grieving the loss of a close friend. I don't know, bro. All right, let's see. It, it helps the show grow so we can get even more success. <laughs> My friend died of cancer, like and subscribe. Why doesn't the government do something about these con men? There's more money for the government if they just make these companies pay fines and apologize and keep it pushing. It's more work for them to actually have to do their job and investigate and litigate and risk losing the case and all this shit. It's easier to just say, all right, look, you were moving like a pyramid scheme. Give us $10 million and promise to not do it again. Follow the money, bro. If politicians stopped taking money from these companies and instead criminalized MLM, I wonder what a boost to the economy that would be. We're talking hundreds of billions of dollars and I'm not making that number up. You can go on the Direct Selling Association website, look at a list of all the MLM companies in alphabetical order that are part of the Direct Selling Association. You can then Google yearly reports or quarterly reports of any of those MLM companies and see what they brought in that year. Now. I'm no economist, but I think hundreds of billions of dollars being put back into education, infrastructure, social programs, healthcare. <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just a conspiracy theorist. I don't know. Hundreds of billions of dollars. You could change the fucking world.